All right, Second Chronicles chapter three. Then Solomon began to build the house of the Lord at Jerusalem and Mount Moriah. And that's the same mountain that you run back to Genesis 22. It's the same spot that Abraham was going to offer up Isaac. That's the same spot that David bought. That's the title deed that's shown in your Bible. Where the Lord appeared unto David his father. In the place that David had prepared the threshing floor of Arnad the Jebusite. And like I said, you go back to 2 Samuel, you have the title deed. In your Bible written to that, that property belongs where the temple sits. Where, where Psalm is going to build. This is where Abraham and Isaac is on top of the mountain. This is a holy, this is a, a historic spot in the Bible. Right now, it sits there is a dumb of the rock. He began to build in the second day, the second month, in the fourth year of his reign. So he's been reigning for four years now. Now the work's going to begin. Now these are the things wherein Solomon was instructed for the building of the house of God. The length by cubic after the first measure was three score cubits and the breadth 20 cubits. Now the cubic is... There's so many different measurements given out there. It's usually from an elbow to the tip of the finger. Well, whose finger? Whose elbow? The kings? The giants? But it's given about 18 inches roughly. Uh, again, it varies. The length of the cubic was the first measure was three score cubits and a breadth 20 cubits. The porch that was in the front of the house. So most houses have a porch in the front. You say, where did that come from? Why don't they have a porch on the back? Why don't they have a porch on the roof? Why, why do most houses have a porch in the front? It comes out of the King James 1611 Bible. All you're doing is copying the temple. Isn't it funny how America does not know about God, but in every backyard you see you mostly see God? You got the, the barbecue pit. You got the, the grill. That, that's a representation of a brazen altar. Most yards have a swimming pool. Well, there's a brazen uh, uh, laver. And then you got the porch in the front of the house. And they, people don't even know why they do that. They don't even realize they're following the Bible. So God's word is excellent, wonderful. The length, of, the length of it was according to the breadth of the house, the temple. So it was the, the, the breadth, 20 cubits. The height was 120, and he overlaid it with pure gold. So imagine a porch, just pure gold, and the desert sun rising up in this area. And Solomon had, you know, irrigated with plants and everything like that. Listen, so, the Jerusalem was beautiful at one time. This picture, this place is lighting up as the sun. In the great, greater house, he sealed with the fir tree. And he overlaid with fine gold and set thereon palm trees and chains. This place is, is absolutely fabulous. And he garnished the house with precious stones for beauty. That word garnish is funny because, you know, if you go to a restaurant, they throw a little piece of lettuce there with something that's colorful, and that's called a garnish. That's, that's there to look pretty. That's, you know, if you don't usually eat it, but it's there for decoration. And here it says that precious stones, valuable stones for money, Solomon just used them as just decoration for God. And the gold was gold of pavilion. So it has been very good gold. Because Solomon only used the best. He overlaid also the house, the beams, the posts, and the walls thereof, and the doors thereof with gold, and graven cherubims on the wall. So he builds his whole house out of fir trees. He uses the best stuff, and then he overlays it with pure gold. That pure gold is a representation of Jesus Christ, the deity, the king of kings. That wood that was used, the fir tree, that represents Jesus Christ, the man. He's 100% man. He's 100% God. And the beauty of God, the beauty of kingship, the beauty of deity over, overlasted what his human uh, means was. He was man and he was God. And that's what Solomon is showing here. This a temple is a type of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he graved cherubims on the walls. Is it okay to have wallpaper? 
Solomon did. They were cherubims. Cherubim wallpaper. They weren't worshipped. Now, if you put a mirror on a wall, of, of, and listen, I, I've seen this in my own fair family. You know, you got Mary picture on the entire wall and the Macbeth heart, and you got the old, okay, that's worshipping. That's not allowed. But if it's decoration, it's for God, it's the beauty. Listen, the Bible says in Revelation, there's four cherubim surrounding God. There used to be five, but now there's four. And he made the most holy house. The length whereof was according to the breadth of the house, 20 cubits. And the breadth thereof, 20 cubits. So it was a cube. And he overlaid it with fine gold, amounting to 600 talents. Ooh, that's six again. 600. Six is the number of man. And the weight of the nails was 50 shekels of gold. Now that would imply that the nails were gold. Or at least the weight of gold. I'm not much of a carpenter to know. And he overlaid the upper chambers with gold. So there's, 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 there's rooms above. This is not just a tabernacle here we're, we're building. This is Solomon's uh, temple. This thing has, has not only the, the holy place, the most holy place, it's got a porch. And it's got chambers all around for what? For all the offerings. A place for all the instruments. A place for the priests. A, pre a place for the treasures. Everything that God's going to need, Solomon provides rooms for. Solomon builds. Uh, the closest thing you got today is right down the street. You got storage centers. That's exactly where the idea came from. Came from the temple. Came from Solomon again. Which they stopped stealing out of the Bible and say they don't believe the Bible. These little storage centers you got all around is an example, is, is almost like what Solomon built. In the most holy house, he made two cherubims of image work and overlaid them with gold. The wings of the cherubim were 20 cubits long. Well, if you if you run back to verse 8 and uh, previous one, good. 20 cubits was the breadth of the house. So these wings stretched from wall to wall. One wing of the one cherubim was 5 cubits reaching to the wall of the house. And the other wing was f likewise 5 cubits reaching to the wing of the other cherubim. Now let me make a note here. These are the only winged beasts in heaven. Angels do not have wings. The cherubim and the seraphim have wings, but not angels. You need to study your Bible and get out, get out of the, other, the nursery rhymes and the junk and Aesop fables of the Bible and, and idiot teachers that teach such things. You got to do what the Bible says. You got to read what the Bible says. Everybody that encountered angels in the Bible see them as men. Zacharias, John the Baptist's father, is in the most holy place, and he's, talk, he's talking to a guy like, uh, what are you doing here? You don't belong here. If, the, if he had wings, if he was his angelic being, he'd be, okay, you're from God. You're from heaven. But he didn't recognize that because there was no wings. And one wing of the other cherubim was five cubits reaching to the wall of the house, and the other wing was five cubits, also joined to the wing of the other cherubim. The wings of these cherubim spread themselves forth twenty cubits, and they stood on their feet, and their faces were inward. And the Bible, if you look with scripture with scripture, those feet were like in the oxen feet. They were split hooves. And they're looking down, they're looking at the, where the mercy seat's going to be. They're looking down where, where God sits. And he made a veil of blue. And this is going to be the inner veil. Now this is not the veil that Jesus uh, rent when he died. This veil is going to be taken by the Babylonians. But this is the same place, the same veil in that position that Jesus rents when he dies. And purple and crimson and fine linen and wrought cherubims thereon. Now here's a difference that we saw from Moses' tabernacle. This veil has, has cherubim's patterns on them. 
the walls have got him, and now th this veil, this inner veil. So when the high priest goes in there, it's like he's walking into glory. I wonder, there's two cherubims in the most holy place. I wonder if there's two cherubims only on that curtain. Because there's only four in heaven. I don't know. Also, he made before the house two pillars of 30 and 5 cubits high. And the chapter, that's the cap that's on top of the pillars, that was on the top of each of them was 5 cubits. He made chains as in the oracle and put them on the heads of the pillars. This is decoration. And made a 100 pomegranates. Decoration and put them on the chains. So you got these chains that are hanging, and the chains have pomegranate designs on them. Solomon is building in beauty. Again, they're not to be worshipped. Why pomegranates? I don't know. He reared up the pillars before the temple, one on the right hand and the other on the left. And he called the name that on the right hand. Jacob, Jacob, and the name that was on the left, Boaz, and that's, that's his great, 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 great grandfather who married Ruth, and you, you come upon the family of David, and you come upon the family of Jesse, and you have the family of David, and you have his, uh, one of them names means strength, I forget the other name, but we'll be continuing more on this, on this, on this temple building.